Arthur Brown Mysteries. Adventures in excitement and suspense. Based on the best-selling novels by the slick storytelling sensation, Carter Brown. People have often told me how much they envied me. Well, I can't blame them. Who wouldn't envy a guy who writes a column like Dynamite with Johnny Lane, which has a four million readership? But right now, even I wouldn't envy me. By the time Senator Rowland's ex-girlfriend Thelma and her two hoodlums had finished with me, I was really in trouble. I knew what was going to happen when the two editions of my column that Thelma had forced me to write hit the streets. When Senator Rowland, in the full pride of his position at the head of the vice probe committee, read those allegations against him and Chief of Police O'Byrne, I could guess who was going to be on the burning end. Me. And to add injury to libel, Tony Spencer, my bodyguard, the girl with the captivating curves and the concrete constitution, had first rescued me and then slugged me over the skull. Oh. Johnny, oh. you're awake. Yeah. How are you feeling? Oh, fine, just fine. How long did I sleep? Hey, you hit me. I'm sorry, Johnny. Honest, I am. But it was the only way to get you here. Where? Where am I? This is the hideout that Mr. Arts picked out for you. You're safe here. Safe? Nothing. I got no time to be safe. I remember now. I got to get to the paper. I got to stop from printing those columns. I'm afraid it's too late for that, Johnny. What do you mean? The paper won't go to bed for a couple of hours it's yet. It's already been to bed, Johnny. And so have you. For three days. Three days? Well, don't scream like that, Johnny. You'll burst an eardrum. I'll just burst. I can't have been out for three days just from a tap on the head. Of course not. I dosed you with a sleeping draft every time you woke up. And those columns, they've been published? Yes, Johnny. And I don't know what you're so worried about. I think you're wonderful. To have the courage to say what you did about the senator and the chief of police, they gave it a special treatment both days. Ran it right on the front page with a heavy black border around it. Well, my obituary notice. Hey, but that only covers two days. How about today's issue? What did they run today? A statement saying you hadn't had time to write your usual column, but that they confidently awaited the proof you're sure to bring in. Oh, they were awfully nice, Johnny. They said that in spite of intimidation, writs, and threats, they stood solidly behind you. Intimidation, writs, and threats? Holy cow, I'm a dead duck. Look, I've got to get back to town before they serve me up to the cops with cranberry sauce. Well, there's no reason why you can't go now. Mr. Arts and I were only concerned with laying you low for a couple of days. You did that all right. No guy could have been laid lower. I've got the car. I'll drive you back. No, thanks. I'll drive myself back. As of now, your services are no longer required. But, Johnny, you'll need a bodyguard more than ever now. The kind of bodyguard that knocks me out cold for three days I can get out of a bottle. And it won't cost me 35 a day in expenses. Goodbye, Miss Spencer. Monsieur Lane, I am so happy to see you. We have missed you. You're going to miss me a lot more in the future, Jules. For a number of years, I should imagine. You are going away, Mr. Lane? Sing, sing, Alcatraz. State hasn't made up its mind yet. But it will, Jules. It will. <laughs> you would like a bottle of your usual? Two. With pleasure. I will fetch it myself. Johnny! Oh, it's good to see you, Johnny. Oh, it's great to see you, Simone. A little luscious feminine company is just what I need right now. I was so worried about you, Johnny. Those terrible men... Did they hurt you? They killed me. Killed you? You are joking, no? Your drink, Miss Elaine. You know, when you did not come for four nights, I was worried. I wondered, perhaps, if I had inadvertently insulted you. Jules, as long as you supply drinks like this, you can't insult me. Oh, I am proud to serve you, Monsieur Lane. The man who has the courage to print what you have printed is a man to be admired. Oh, don't drag that up. There's a $2 million damage suit against me and the paper, and my editor's going quietly crazy. Yeah. Uh, what is the latest development? Perhaps you would give us the inside story, monsieur. Tell us how your fight against Vice is progressing. Vice has won a technical knockout. It's only a matter of the referee counting me out. He must be somewhere around eight already. 
Truly, Johnny. It is as bad as that. Worse. Much worse. Jules, would you mind leaving us alone for a little while? No, of course not. I just remembered. Uh, someone ordered a duck and I have to go out and shoot one. Poor Johnny. You are in low spirits, eh? I expect to be in very high spirits by the time I finish this bottle. Uh, Johnny, if you feel low, why not go to my place? You can tell me all about it and it might help you, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it might. Johnny, here comes trouble, I think. When you're through, come to my apartment. I'll be waiting. I looked up to see what Simone meant by trouble, and I realized she was right. The sending on me was Captain Stanger, Chief of Police O'Byrne's right-hand man. Well, 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 if it isn't my favorite columnist. Sit down, Captain, kill yourself drinking. Hey, when did you get back into circulation? Tonight. I was kidnapped. Oh, no. And I suppose you were forced to write those columns. You better think up something better than that, Johnny Boy, or Burns madder than a hornet. He's issuing a call for you as a material witness. And by the time the boys are through with you, you'll be happy to admit it was you who assassinated Lincoln. Okay, so you come to take me in. Do I get the handcuffs on me now? Oh, you've got me wrong, Johnny. I'm not taking you any place. Officially, I'm off duty. And officially, I don't even know that you're wanted. I uh, just dropped in for a friendly chat. I don't get it. Why should you bother to tip me off? I'll tell you, Johnny. I think you're in a spot. Give me an original thought. That somebody must have tipped you off to print that stuff. Somebody who knew what they were talking about. After all, they were right about Albert Ferraro's killing, weren't they? You mean they could be right about Senator Rowland and Police Chief O'Byrne? No, did I say that? I just figure that if I were you, Johnny, I'd find out and find out fast before you haven't got a chance of finding out. Before you got bruises where your body used to be. I think it over, Johnny. And you don't have much time. Well, be seeing you, scribbler. I watched him go, wondering whether he was crazy or me. Then I pulled myself together and left the club. Destination? Simone's apartment. When her door opened, I thought, oh, she'd changed suddenly. She was wearing a suit and it developed a blue shadow on her chin. And I realized it was her Adagio partner, Simon. Ah, come in, Mr. Lane. I've been expecting you. Simone was caught up with some business, so I have taken her place. You won't mind if I say that it's not quite the same? Still, perhaps I can persuade you to put up with it. You know, I envy you, Mr. Lane... A columnist of your renown must have a fascinating life. Yeah, it's all right when you can keep on living. It's the dying that's the tough part. Pardon? I do not understand. I died tonight, professionally. Oh. You know, surprisingly enough, Mr. Len, I think I can help you with your problem. You? I have some knowledge which should interest you. Okay, I'm listening. You know, yours is a wonderful country, Mr. Len. Everything here is organized on the grand scale. Even crime. The rackets. And there's a new type of racketeer today. The racketeer with education, good social background, good standing in the community. Perhaps a company director or even a politician. Is that not so? Yeah, it's so. Let us take a hypothetical case. Say, a politician who is also a racketeer. Let us imagine him controlling the vice and the profits of vice in the city. For a time, all goes well. But sooner or later, what you call the heat is on. People get tired of the rackets flourishing under their noses and the noses of the police. They protest. The newspapers take up the protest. Obviously, something must be done. What? What would you do in a like situation? Listen, I may have been taken for a ride the last few days, but I'm not that dumb. I thought of that one. You have yourself elected head of an investigating committee inquiring into vice in the city so that you can cover yourself and at the same time crush any opposition that might need crushing. Exactly so. I congratulate you, Mr. Lane. But this opposition you speak of is, of course, part of the politician's own crime organization. Oh, I didn't know that. Why should you? It is that part of the organization that is being squeezed too much, bled just a little too much by the politician. They are not organized, and they are alarmed by the politician's coming activities with the investigation committee. 
but they lack the means to positive action. And then the politician does something very stupid. He throws over his girlfriend, Thelma, whom he had confided in too long and too much. Precisely. And Thelma has some knowledge of events to happen. In particular, she knows that one member of the opposition is still working for our politician. Let's just call him Roland, huh? I'm getting tired of this hypothetical case. Very well. So, Thelma knows that Ferraro, who is supposedly one of the opposition, is still working for the senator. He is to give evidence at the first hearing of the investigation committee. He will reveal the activities of all the people in the senator's organization whom the senator wishes to get rid of. So Roland didn't have Ferraro killed. On the contrary, the opposition had him killed. Ah. Just where do you fit into the picture, Simon? I am a member of the opposition. It was handled cleverly, I think. Ferraro's death served a double purpose. It prevented him giving information, and it served as a warning to the senator. And then what? And then we used our master stroke. We needed widespread publicity for our scheme to work. And what could be better than a columnist with a readership of four million? You, Mr. Lane, don't you feel flattered? I feel slightly sick. So I was taken for a ride. All the way. First you were given several items to publish. Then all that was needed was to move you out of the way, persuade you to write what we wanted you to write, and make sure it was published. At first it seemed as though our plans came unstuck when your friends rescued you. But fortunately they hid you away as well as we could have done ourselves. What happens now? Now? It is a sad thing, Mr. Lane. But you will appreciate that the situation cannot remain static. At the moment, the police and Senator Roland are allied against you. Your own newspaper will discredit you. So the public will begin to doubt your allegations. But one thing would convince them that you were telling the truth. Hmm? What's that? If you were to be murdered. What? Then people would be convinced that you had been right and that you had been murdered to prevent your presenting the proof of your allegations. It is not a bad prospect, is it, Mr. Lane? Once you are dead, you will be a national hero, a martyr. Think of the honor and glory. I'm thinking of what comes before that. Oh, don't let it worry you. It will be a quick end. Don't struggle, Mr. Lane. Accept the inevitable. We experience the greatest adventure that life can offer. Death. I, as the giver, and you as the receiver. <laughs>